Uh, but anyway, let me uh, formally introduce our dear uh, guest speaker. And this is Dr. of Medicine, Matthias Gierke, who is uh, <coughs> a leader of medical section and member of Vorstand in Giltanum. And uh, I believe we are really blessed because we have uh, as leader of section practicing doctor because uh, Matthias lives between uh, his clinic, which he co-founded about 20 plus years ago in Berlin. So he's spending one week in Berlin with patients and colleagues and uh, three weeks in Goethe. So uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's great because, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all practical, practical, 100% uh, practical person. Yeah, dear, dear Matthias, uh, I mean, can you just uh, start and uh, you can talk to people and uh, just tell what's going on in Goethe, what you're doing in medical sections. And okay. uh, in three, four minutes, we're going to start our uh, yeah. lecture. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I can give you some aspects of our work in the Goethe Arnhem on the one hand and in our hospital in Berlin, Havelhöhe Hospital on the other hand. In Havelhöhe, we have a lot of patients, and this means a lot of COVID patients, and we have to treat them, and we have some patients on our intensive care unit, which are in a way really severe ill and others on other state wards. And we are really confronted with the shadows of this pandemia and we are really uh, challenged to help patients in difficult situations and our hospital has about 400 beds and a lot of wards are now filled with patients with COVID. I think two or three wards are COVID wards in the moment. And this is one perspective in the medical work in our hospital. And I will say you that it's really helpful to have antiposophic medicine, antiposophic therapeutic approaches for these patients by the nurses, by other therapists, by the art therapists, urethmy. And it's so helpful to support patients in this really difficult situation. And in the Goethe Arnum, now we have the mystery dramas and only 2G, that means a lot of members of our society are unable to join these performances and they can't see the mystery dramas and this is really a pity. But <clears throat> in the last year, we have made the experience that the Goethe Arnum was totally closed. And this is a really bad situation and we have to practice a spiritual life in this building. And even in really unusual conditions, it's really needed to practice a spiritual life, to give lectures, to have performances and something like that, you with me. And all these things are contributing to the inner life of the Goethe Arnum and all the other buildings around the Goethe Arnum. And the working in the Goethe Arnum leadership is a very fruitful one because we have so many sections with, which are deeply involved in the COVID topic. And we have to work together because solutions or perspectives have to be worked out through many sections, not only one or not only the medical section. And so we have a cooperation with the section of social sciences and agriculture. And it's really nice to make this experience that working together is really possible and leads to new steps in the understanding and perspectives in this COVID pandemia. And so we have to, we have a lot of challenges and 
we are really looking forward to in the new year and uh, hope that new forces and spiritual uh, forces could come in the new year to us and to help to reinforce healing qualities, healing properties in our society and even in mankind. Now, and shall I start with the lecture? What do you think? And uh, then yes, start. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Message. Okay. Yes, I think we have plenty of time. Yes, yeah. it's uh, seventy-five yeah. people um, listening to us. I think and yeah. still people are coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your introduction, and I send to all of you very warm greetings from Europe to all the countries, <laughs> and I hope that we will have a very fruitful new year and all the best and heartfelt feelings to all of you. And I'm very happy that we can speak today about the warmth because the warmth is really an important element. And we can say that warmth is the element which is related to the threshold and warmth can bridge the natural physical world on the one hand and the spiritual world on the other hand. And because of this, the warmth is a central element near the threshold. And if you look at the biography of our no, human no. beings, then you can see that the birth, the birth is really deeply related to warmth. Mm -hmm. and the very critical situation in the birth situation is how to have enough warmth. And so the entrance in our earthly life is related to warmth. And even the end of our earthly life, if we are accompanying dying patients, we see that warmth is really needed that of course the connection and the encounter to the patient needs warmth, but you feel you many patients can develop fever and you see that warmth is in a way the bridge how to come into our earthly existence and how to leave our earthly incarnation. And so you have the warmth is an element which connects the natural being, the natural level on the one hand and the spiritual level on the other hand. And this is the same situation in our incarnation, in our body. In this situation, our warmth is the element in which our spiritual being our eye organization works. And so I would like to show you different levels and qualities of warmth. And we will speak about the warmth in our organism, the healing properties of warmth and the spiritual and soul dimensions of warmth. Because if you look at the threefold organism, then you have in the middle the warmth, the warmth of the heart. And if you look at your will, at, to your metabolic limb system, you have the fire element of the will. And Rudolf Steiner points out that the will is closely connected to the fire. And for the young doctors, he makes clear that will shows us the working of this fire, of the spiritual fire. And so you can say you have the fire element, the flames in your will, in your metabolic system. You have in a very special sense, the warmth in the region of your heart, and you have the light in your nerve sense system. 
And this is in a way from the viewpoint of light and warmth and fire, the threefoldness of our body, the light in our head, nerve sense system, the warmth radiating out of our heart. And we will see what, this, what is meant by this and the fire, the fire processes in our metabolic limb system. And if we look at the warmth from a physical point of view, then we have the increasing temperature in our atmosphere. And we see that our earth is in a way developing fever and we have to help and to heal our atmosphere, earthly atmosphere. And if you look at the temperature of our human body, we have the opposite situation. The human body temper temperature, our core temperature is declining. It's cooling down. We know since more than one and a half century that our temperature is reduced. And I think for men, the temperature is reduced by 0 0.59 degrees. For women, by 0 0.32 degrees. And you see our body is becoming cooler and cooler. And coldness is related to sclerotic diseases. And so we have a problem that in the earthly atmosphere, we have increasing temperature. And in our body, we have a reduction of temperature. We have a cooling down of our body temperature. And so we have on the one hand, the temperature, of the outer world of our body. And this is more from a physical point of view, a certain aspect of warmth. And then, you have the living processes in our organism and they are deeply related to the warmth. And if you look at the lower part of our organism, then you have upbuilding qualities, anabolic qualities related to the warmth. And if you look at the nerve sense system, you have warmth too, but this is a catabolic, non, not upbuilding quality and so you have a polarity of warmth in your organism anabolic upbuilding qualities a certain brute warmth in the lower part in the metabolic system of our organism and the catabolic uh, warmth quality in the nerve sense system and very important are the rhythms of warmth and we are now, we know that all the rhythmic system depends on the light and on the sun, on the circadian rhythms of the sun. But the integration of all these different rhythms in our organism, the rhythms of liver, heart, brain, and other organs, the integration of the rhythmic system of our organism is possible through the warmth. The warmth is the integrating element for our rhythmic system. And so you have on the one side, the light of the sun, which is influencing our rhythmic system. And you have the warmth of our human body, which is capable to integrate all the different rhythms in our physiology. And then you have not only the physical aspect of warmth and not the life processes, the warmth in the living organism, but you have in the same way, the warmth in your soul. And it's really astonishing that the warmth in your soul is influenced by your bodily warmth. If you take a warm glass of tea in your right hand and you are asked to check another person, is this a warm character or a cold person, then you feel the others more warm if you have a warm glass of tea in your hand. And so our 
inner warmth is influenced by the outer warmth and we feel a certain warm quality in our soul. And then you have not only the warmth in the soul, but you have spiritual fire. And this is very important because in the spiritual fire, you find the ideals, all these inner spiritual forces which are living in our spirit and which are capable to develop a certain fire in our life. And then we come to the picture or the, to the picture of a flame. And if you look at a flame, you find the upright position. And the upright position is in a way a certain sign for the eye organization. And all flames are orientated to in the upright position and are a picture of our eye and of other high spiritual beings. Because if you look at the hierarchies and the seraphims, then the name seraphims comes from fire and from burning. And these are very high spiritual beings closely related to flame and fire. And so you have the fire and the spiritual warmth quality. And if you put it together, you have four levels of warmth. First is the physical aspect of warmth. And it's really nice to know that we have in our body really hot areas. If you look at cells and mitochondria, then you can measure approximately 50 degrees temperature in your cells. And 37 degrees is an average of the whole body and core temperature. But in the cells, you have a very differentiated warmth organism and you have areas and organelles and organisms in the cells which are really hot and this means until 50 degrees and then you have the living uh, level of our organism and the warmth which is needed for all metabolic processes and this is the living level of warmth. And then you have the warmth in the soul. This is the third level. And the warmth in your mind, in your fire. And if you remember the very important sentence given by Rudolf Steiner, that we have to transform our thoughts to ideals, then you have a certain picture about the importance of the inner fire because thoughts are in a way reducing our inner forces and they are destroying our etheric organization and inner fire ideals if we are capable to develop ideals then we can come to new forces to a certain yeah, new possibility for our spiritual working and for the inner quality of warmth it's very important to know that warmth is in a way a certain sacrifice of the spiritual world and this means that higher spiritual beings are capable to sacrifice warmth for the incarnation and the bridging of the spiritual being with the bodily level. And if we go to, the, if we come to the question, what is the healing property of this warmth? Then we can see that Rudolf Steiner has pointed out so many examples of healing qualities of warmth and 100 years later we know so many facts which can confirm his ideas of the healing property of warmth and i will lead you to some 
aspects of healing with warmth. And I will start with one concept given by Rudolf Steiner to, for the treatment of diabetes type 2. And this was in 1920. And in this year, Rudolf Steiner recommended to use hot water immersions bath with essential oils, rosemary oils. And nobody has understood this at this time. And this was the time in which insulin was uh, introduced in medicine and all medical doctors were of course happy to have this hormone for treatment, for the treatment of type, especially type one diabetes. And nobody has understood what could be meant with warmth and warmth immersions uh, in the treatment of diabetes. And now 100 years later, we know so many facts which are showing us that diabetes can be influenced in a positive way by using warmth. And this is by using warm baths or in water immersions with essential oils or even sauna. <clears throat> and we know if we make applications with external warmth, then the blood sugar profile is ameliorated, the insulin sensitivity is ameliorated, and you find a lot of positive effects on blood pressure, on the weight of the body and something like that. And it's really um, astonishing that we now know that, of course, moving and physical exercise is very important in the treatment of patients with diabetes, but if you use warm immersions or water immersions with essential oils, you can do the same. And in this way, in the perspective or from the perspective of medicine, we have a very nice confirmation of this recommendation given by Rudolf Steiner for 100 years about the healing property of warmth in the case of sclerotic disease. And of course, you can imagine that diabetes is a sclerotic disease and we need the other pole, the movement and the reinforcement of uh, warmth to come to overcome these problems. And surely you know that warmth is really needed in the treatment of cancer. And there was one study which has questioned what are the conditions for remissions of cancer. And it's really interesting that all patients which are happy to get a remission of their cancer disease, a complete remission, it, had has has had 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 um, fever or a high temperature before the remission occurs, and this is according to a certain description by Rudolf Steiner. He pointed out that we need fever and warmth to overcome cancer. And with mistletoe therapy, we are able to, in, to induce fever in special situations. It's not necessary to do this in each patient, of course, but if there are special conditions and if there is a certain possibility to do this, then we can help with fever to manage or to help give a certain improvement in cancer disease. And then it's a really next important example for the healing properties is cardiovascular diseases. And we are so, it's really astonishing that warmth can help in case of cardiovascular diseases. And you can understand 
that all sclerotic diseases in the threefold organism, in the metabolic sphere we've spoken about diabetes, or if you look at the rhythmic system to the heart and to the vessels and to the cardiovascular system, all sclerotic diseases are in a way treatable with warmth. And we know that we have a really significant reduction in the total mortality through the application of warmth. And this is the so-called Finnish sauna study, which has shown us that we can achieve a substantial reduction in mortality by using warmth. And now you see warmth has, is a really relevant therapeutical uh, factor. And astonishing is if you look at the nerve sense system and you look at uh, dementia or Alzheimer diseases, then we know in the moment that warmth can have a positive influence to these sclerotic diseases, even in the brain. And so you see in the threefold organism, the positive working, the healing properties of warmth in the metabolic system. I have mentioned diabetes type two. In the rhythmic system, I have mentioned cardiovascular and heart diseases. And in the nerve system, and there I've mentioned dementia or other neurodegenerative disorders, positive influenced by the application of warmth. And so you can see we have on the one hand the cooling down of our organism and we have an increasing incidence of sclerotic diseases in several parts of our mankind. And on the other hand, we can see that warmth has a healing property. And we need warmth in the sense of physical warmth, but we need warmth in the same way in the encounter with the patient. And this means love for the patient. And we need, on the other hand, spiritual warmth which reinforce the healing properties. And if we are asking what is the meaningfulness of warmth for the soul and for our inner spiritual life, because we have spoken about the bridging function of the warmth one side is related to the physical world, to the bodily world, the other side to the inner spiritual being. Then we can focus or question what is the importance of warmth for our meditation, for the spiritual being. And there it is probably helpful to be aware that Rudolf Steiner has spoken about four steps in the meditation. And these steps are not one step after another, but they are related to another. And the first is the preparation. If you look at the Rosicrucian meditation with the seven roses and the black cross, then you have at first a preparation how to build this picture and this imagination. And this is the first step. I, I would say it's the way to the cathedral. And then in the meditation, you enter the cathedral. And if you have done this first step, then you have in a way three next steps in the meditation. And it's, for my opinion, very helpful to read the lecture, I think, given by Rudolf Steiner from the 1st May in 1913, in which he points out these three different steps. And he gives us the example of one meditation, wisdom lives 
in the light. And then he points out that we can start with our thinking to take, to carry this sentence in our mind, in the light of our thinking. And then we can transform this first sentence in a second one. And this is in the translation, the wisdom radiates in the light. And now you feel that our inner feeling is engaged in the meditation into the light of the first sentence comes the warmth in the second sentence that you be aware of the radiance of wisdom in the light. And then the third sentence is <clears throat> Wisdom of the world radiates in the light. And now we have reached the sphere of our world. And if you look at these three steps, and you find these three steps in the Rosicrucian meditation with the seven roses and the black cross in the same way, it's in a way a certain typical typical steps in anthroposophic meditation for my understanding, you start in a way with your head and this is the pole of light. And then you transform the thinking to a thinking of the heart. And this means the warmth of the heart to engage the feeling in the meditation. And then you come to your limbs to the will, and you can feel that now the meditation or the inner spiritual works can enter our daily life. And this is really a very important experience. I feel that ideas not only related to our head, that they can come to the quality of ideals and if you have a certain mood in your soul a certain feeling of this inner quality of ideals then your will is engaged and you get new forces out of the warmth to fulfill your daily work and this is in a way for my opinion a certain help not to burn out, but to develop new warmth, new forces for the daily work. And because of this form, and for my understanding, Rudolf Steiner has given the inner meditative path and has added this to the professional, our professional work. The inner path is in a way one side and the outer work, our professional work is the other pole. And both are belonging to another like night and day, but it's not possible that they are mixed. We have to divide the sphere of meditation or the inner space of meditation from the outer work but they are really clear related in this situation and the light we can develop in our head and the warmth we can develop in our heart can come to our limbs and to our work in our profession. And if you look at the composition of the School of Spiritual Science on the one hand and the first class and our inner path in different sections, in the medical section or other sections too, then you can feel that this is in a way a certain esoteric origin for the reinforcement of our daily forces in hospital, in schools, in other situations of our life. And we can be thankful 
for this inner spiritual source for our deeds and for our daily life. And these forces are in a way born out of the warmth, the warmth of our heart. And <clears throat> if you are uh, questioning for one example, uh, very probably appropriate meditation, which can show us this, then Rudolf Steiner has given in the year 20, 1923, an important meditation to a French and a pacifist. And this meditation starts, in my heart, sun strength shines. In my soul, world warmth works. I will breathe the strength of the sun. I will feel the warmth of the world. Sun strength fills me. World warmth penetrates me. And if you look at this meditation, you have on the one hand, the forces, the strength of the sun, which are shining in our heart or out of our heart. And if you look at an elderly person, a matured human being, and if you look in his or her eyes, then you can see the light coming out, out of the eyes. You can feel the inner warmth and love, and you can be aware of the goodness in the will. And so you can feel and you get the impression of the inner sun with, which is shining out of the heart. And so the first line means in my heart, sun strength shines. And if you are questioning what are these forces, sun forces in our heart, then you can be aware that this is the etheric world. The etheric world shows a very important metamorphosis, a transmission from the living forces through the warmth of the heart to the light of our thinking. And if you look at our threefold body, then you have in the lower parts, the life. And you have in the middle, the heart and the warmth of the heart. And you can be aware that the heart is capable to radiate free warmth, about 85%. The whole metabolism of the heart radiates 85% in the surrounding, in the outer space and it's not used for metabolic purposes in the, and, uh, in the heart. And so you can see that the heart is one of our organs which are really engaged in radiating warmth to create free warmth. And if you look at this metamorphosis, which is called by Rudolf Steiner as the etherization of the blood, then you have the metamorphosis of the living forces in our lower parts metabolic system through the warmth of the heart to the light of our thinking. And this are really is a cosmic image of the mysterium of Golgatha in each human being. And this is the deeper ground of the sun forces in our human being. And if we hear the first line, in my heart, sun strength shines, then we can be aware of this deep transformation of living forces to the light in our thinking through the heart and the warmth of our heart. 
And if we look at the second part, in my soul, world warmth works. Then the warmth of our soul is related to the love. And if the love is not egocentric, and if the love is not directed to the own person, but if the love is opened and connecting, connected to the world, then you have the warmth of the world in the love of the human being, in the human soul. And you have on the one hand, the sun, the light of the sun, the sun forces, sun shines in the heart. And you have on the other level, the warmth, which is so closely related to the heart, near to the love in your soul. And so you have both lines. In my heart, sun strength shines. In my soul, world warmth works. And after the etheric level, after the level of our soul, the love of our soul, now we speak with our I, with our inner spiritual being. I will breathe the strength of the sun. I will feel the warmth of the world. Now the inner I will be connected with the forces, the strength of the sun, with the warmth of the world. And we are nourished by the shining sun. We are in a way supported by the warmth of the road. And the end of this short meditation is the warmth of the road. Sun strength fills me. World warmth penetrates me. And so we are connected with warmth and the light of the sun. And if you are comparing this meditation about light and warmth, you can say, then you feel probably a certain connection to the fourth part of the foundation stone meditation and this means the working of the Christ Son in light and warmth. And the working of this Son enlightening our thinking, our heads, and creating warmth in our hearts. And so we have a very, for my opinion, important meditation, which is related to the Son into the warmth and can help us to bring our inner being in a contact with the etheric world radiating out of the periphery in our being and the inner warmth of our soul in relationship to the soul, to the love of the world. And if we are working with this picture of the sun and of the heart, we can feel that the heart has a very special meaning of functioning, not in the physiologic perspective, but in the spiritual perspective. And one of the very important functions of the heart is the sense function that the heart is a sense organ and a sense organ for the encounter for the other being for karmic aspects. And now we can feel that we with the heart can in a way enter in the realm of the karma of, to reinforce the inner relationship to the other human being, to patients, and to all other things in the world. And 
if we are questioning what are this, what is the warmth and what are the sun forces in our karma, then we can see that we find different levels in our karma related to the sun and to the spirits of the sun. If you are looking at your biography, you see so many events and you can see a lot of details in your life and they are composing in a way a certain picture and they are composing in a way a certain shape or form of your life. And if you are questioning how you could meet the partner or other important persons for you, then you see that there is a movement in your life, that there is in the karma a certain movement which brings together other persons, that they work together, that they come to common initiatives and that they find another. And Goethe has spoken in a very nice poem about the karma and the wind, that in the karma blows the wind and brings movement in the world of karma. And then you can be aware of the wisdom of our life. And Søren Kierkegaard has given us the sentence that we are living our life forwardly, but we understand our life backwardly. And if we look back in our biography, then we can be aware of the inner wisdom of our life. And if you look at these three elements, which are in a way living in our destiny, in our karma, then you have form on the one hand, you have the movement <clears throat> on the other hand, and you have the inner wisdom of our life, of the composition of our biography. And these elements, form, movement, and wisdom are related to the second hierarchy. And this means the hierarchy of the spirits of form, the hierarchy of the spirits of movement and wisdom. And this second hierarchy is closely related to the sun. And the sun is in a way the cosmic heart of the cosmic world. And so our heart as a sense organ for karmic situations, for the karma, and even for the coming karma, for future perspectives of our life, is deeply related to this cosmic heart, the huge heart, the sun, and the spirits of the sun, which are the spirits of form, movement, and wisdom. And if we are questioning what is the, poss the possibility of warmth or what forces can be created by the warmth to build communities, because this is one next topic I would uh, speak about, then we can come from this perspective to the inner quality of community. And community building means that we need warmth. And if you are looking at communities of the working of different human beings together, and if I look in my hospital or in other contexts I'm working now, then you can feel that you have in a community different higher members, like in the individual, in the human individual, 
and you have, of course, a physical organization and you have a certain physical aspect of a community. This is one, the physical body of communities. But then we have to be aware of the life processes in communities. And this means the breathing of a community. Are they closed boundaries, closed borders, or is there a certain breathing in a community? Is there a certain warmth in the community? Or is there enough nutrition to in the community? Or is there a certain capacity to, to distinguish, to distinguish which belongs to the community and which is a topic not belonging to the community? And we have to question about main, the quality of maintenance in the community and even of growth and of a creative capacity of reproduction. And you see, you can see in the community seven life processes and they, these life processes are building up the etheric level of a community. And so you have the physical organization on the one hand, and you have the etheric organization, and this means seven life processes. And then, very interesting, you have the soul dimension of communities. Rudolf Steiner oftentimes spoke about the mood in a community, and he used the word spiritual idealism. In, the, in studying anthroposophy and to create a certain warmth out of these ideas and concepts of anthroposophy. And if you look at uh, this level in a community, then you can detect certain qualities. And you have some persons in a com community which are clearly linked to the Saturn quality, uh, which long planning and uh, which uh, wonderful memory to and, and this is in a way a certain quality and you have others which have a certain overview over a whole situation a certain wisdom and these are members of a community which are in a way related to jupiter and then you have very important persons with morph mass qualities very with courage and initiative and a lot of forces to do something and then you have other members which are in a way interested in harmonizing to create harmony in the community this are in a way sun forces in a community and you have venus forces in a community and mercury forces uh, in a community and the creative power of the moon and it's really interesting to look at communities from this planetary aspects if you have only saturns then it's not too easy to come to new steps and if you have too much moon quality then a lot of new ideas arise and uh, it's so nice to see it in this and that perspective and not, uh, not really working can start and if you have a lot of mass qualities then <laughs> you have a lot of initiatives but you need a certain overview you need the wisdom of the composition and so you can see what happens in a community from the planetary aspect, from the soul aspect of a community. And then, of course, the community can have spiritual perspectives, a spiritual goal, and a community can be united in one name. And if you look at the fourth part of the foundation stone meditation, then you find the Christ Son as the huge force working in a community, in a building, in a built community. And so 
you see you have in a way a physical organization in a community. You have an etheric organization in a community. You have the soul and we have to develop soul qualities, warmth in a community and the inner fire, the spiritual dimension of community, the inner spiritual perspective of communities. And if you are questioning what can we do to reinforce these higher members, then you can see that meditative work can reinforce our higher members in our own human being. If you get out from meditation new perspectives, if you have new ideas, if a new light is shining probably in a time of darkness in the soul, then the soul can be reinforced. A healing property can be built up by the new light, what is born out of the meditation. And meditation can open the soul and Probably you know, if we are questioning at which time of the day the best ideas occur, then this is in a way the morning time after awakening. And then you, you have to wait one hour probably, then new ideas can come and a new light shines into the soul. And in a way you can say that meditation can be a certain morning situation of our inner being and can help to open the soul for a new light. And this light is helping and healing the soul, even the wounds in the soul. And for this, Rudolf Steiner has spoken about the astral body as a body which is in a way characterized or which is reinforced by faith and beliefs. And belief body is another name for our astral body because if we have new, if we get new perspectives, a new light in our soul, then we can have a stabilization, a reinforcement of our soul forces and a new power develops in our soul. Astral body, another name is belief or faith body. And if you look at a second quality, which is born out of our meditative work, then we have spoken about the warmth in our meditation. And this means in a way the love. And love is the main healing property for our etheric body and this means that in the relationship to another person in the relationship to a patient we need the warmth of the love hatred is in a way destroying etheric forces love is a real huge medicine and paracelsus has spoken about the love as a very important remedy in the healing of patients. We need the love for the patient to reinforce the healing properties in the etheric body. And for this, Rudolf Steiner has named the etheric body, the love body, the faith body, the astral one, the love body is the etheric body. And if you get new uh, perspective, if you can see a new light, then forces of hope can occur and can be developed. And we need forces of hope in our soul. And no healing is possible beyond hope. We need hope for all healing processes, even on the 
level of the physical body. And because of this, hope is a very strong force for healing the physical body. And for this, Rudolf Steiner has named the physical body the hope body. And so you can understand that meditation is not only a way to come to higher knowledge and to enter a new sphere in the higher worlds, but in the same way you have the healing properties of meditation. And it's really touching that Rudolf Steiner has introduced for patients in 21, the last century, meditations to reinforce the healing properties. And you have in each meditation on the one hand, the striving to the light. And this means the Michaelic direction, the Michaelic impulse to come to a new light, to overcome darkness and to come to develop the inner spiritual being and to connect the spiritual being with the spiritual being of the world. This is the inner path to achieve higher knowledge, the Michaelic path in a way. But in the same way, you have the Raphaelic working. And this means that all these steps are reinforcing in a healing manner, in a healing sense, our bodies, our physical body through the hope coming out of our inner work, through the love to reinforce the etheric level and to the soul, the astral body, which is in a way reinforced by new perspectives and new beliefs and our faith in these new perspectives. And so you have healing properties, healing forces in our organism. We can reinforce these healing properties by the inner meditative work. And this means from our perspective, by the creation of warmth and development of warmth, which is the healing element bridging our spiritual activities to the healing world of our organism. And now you can transform or you can bring the same idea to the communities. And we have spoken about the higher members in communities the physical level and, uh, of organi organizations and the etheric processes in communities, the soul and the spiritual dimension of communities. And if we have an inner work, an inner spiritual orientation, then we can reinforce these higher members of communities. And for my opinion, I feel if we live with meditation, if we live with the foundation stone meditation, with the rhythms of the foundation stone meditation, we can reinforce our working together, our community, our anthroposophic society, with which all other friends, and we can reinforce through the inner path, healing, properties and healing forces for the community, even in a large sense, the community of mankind. And so I think we have looked at the warmth, bridging the inner world to the bodily world, bridging the spiritual work with the healing properties and warmth is the leading element for this healing effectiveness. And I would say that it might be helpful for the end of my lecture to come back to this meditation, which is mentioning the heart, the sun, the warmth, the light in a way, the shining of the sun, and the warmth in our soul. And 
which is in a way connected with some motives of the foundation stone meditation. In my heart, sun strength shines. In my soul, world warmth works. I will breathe the strength of the sun. I will feel the warmth of the world. Sun strength fills me. World warmth penetrates me. And so I send you all my best wishes, heartfelt wishes to all of you. Many sun forces, warmth to all of you all over the world. And I'm very thankful for your attention and give you my best thoughts and wishes for the new year. All the best for all of you. Thank you very much, Matthias. Um, dear friends, we are uh, flowing into questions and answers section. But before, because we're already working for one hour, so let's do two, three minutes uh, break. You can have a sip of water and stretch your legs. And uh, I'll see you back in two, three minutes. Thank you.
<clears throat> Dear Matthias, I sent you a question just now. Can you just say yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. So it's gonna yeah. be there for a while. Yeah, but you, you have to see uh, concerning the recording and the quality and uh, that's fine and uh, otherwise it's possible. Yeah. Would, would you like to watch it first before it's done? No, it's not necessary. Mm. Sure. I'm very glad if you do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, dear friends, we are back. Um, so because each uh, speaker going to be spotlighted, so it's going to take a little bit more time than usual. So and uh, we're going to proceed by raising hand. Do you know how to raise hand, right? So please, if you have a question, raise your hand. And I will spotlight you and uh, please speak to you directly to uh, Matthias, uh, just please, uh, we would like to hear questions rather than long, long statements. Yeah, please uh, stay around the topic. Okay, uh, looks like people proceeding with uh, uh, chat screen. So one question, first question. The last question was, dear Matthias, could you post this meditation in German? <clears throat> this is of course possible. I can say the, the, the meditation in German, <clears throat> but probably it would be better if we sent the text because not all are, uh, capable to understand the German version. It starts, in meinem Herzen strahlt die Kraft der Sonne. In meiner Seele wirkt die Wärme der Welt. Ich will atmen die Kraft der Sonne. Ich will fühlen die Wärme der Welt. Sonnenkraft erfüllt mich. Wärme der Welt durchdringt mich. That's, it's in a way the German original version of this meditation. <laughs> um, I can see a question from Amy. Uh, Matthias, you can read it and I can read it for everybody. When a person has a surgery and a removal of an organ, <clears throat> for example, appendix, more heart alternations to heart or removal of breast. How is warmth of soul and spirit affected? How does our uh, archetype, I believe, change? Yes, <clears throat> I think if we remove an organ, then of course there are different relationships to the soul and to the spirit and to the higher members. And if you have such a removal of an organ, then a certain disruption takes place and the connection is in a way disrupted between the inner human being and the body. And it needs not a lot of warmth and even love to bring together the inner human being with the uh, body and this is can be reinforced and fostered by remedies and I think if you use arnica and other remedies then you can help to bring the higher members back again to the organism if you have a wound then there is a certain disruption of the connection of the higher members with the physical body. And wound healing means 
to bring together the higher members again to the uh, body. And this means that we can reinforce the connection and we can heal the soul and we can even develop new perspectives, even a new identity with an altered physical body from the spiritual perspective. And so, of course, each surgery and each uh, intervention on the physical level is altering the relationship of the higher members to the physical body, but there are there is a chance for healing properties for the for an inner healing to reconnect with the body and to use the body as instrument for the spiritual being. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it's a question from Florian. Florian, you are spotlighted. Yeah, go ahead. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Hello, Matthias. Uh, I want to thank you very much uh, for your wonderful presentation. I uh, had a question related to Rudolf Steiner's uh, lectures that you're familiar with, of course, uh, having to do with geographic medicine and how warmth uh, is uh, playing a role in that context. Uh, for example, I know uh, uh, Virginia Brett, for example, lived in Dornach and Joseph Gunsinger as well. And they were apparently advised uh, for medical purposes to move to a warmer climate. And they ended up moving to Hawaii here. And of course, to our great benefit, uh, uh, I was just wondering if you had anything you could uh, add to this picture of warmth <clears throat> in a geographic sense. Yes. My, my wife was saying, well, in Hawaii, it's often very hot. <laughs> I think it, it's a very interesting topic. And we have to be aware that not only warmth, but in the same way, the light, the altitude, and the geographical uh, composition of the soil are important for our health. And Rudolf Steiner has spoken about lung diseases and the importance of geographic areas. And that is, is probably helpful to change a certain place if someone is suffering from uh, chronic obstructive lung disease or other chronic diseases. And on the other hand, we know that the exposition to the light is very important for our health and can in a way support our immune system. And so we can see that light has, has a lot of healing properties for our cardiovascular system, for our nerve sense system, even for our brain and for our bones and for a lot of diseases. And so we need a certain influence of the light. And from the geographic viewpoint, I would say we have, it depends on the disease on the one hand, and essential is the quality of the surrounding in regard to the soil on the one hand, the geographic area to the atmosphere to the light and of course the warmth and so we have different components which we have to be aware if we are questioning what is the meaning of a geographic orientated medicine yeah, thank you very much so I saw hand from Dr. Andrea. Dr. Andrea Rentier, would you like to ask a question? 
Okay. Hello? Yes, yes, you are in, please. Yes, hi. Thank you uh, uh, for the nice presentation. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could say, I don't know if I missed it in your lecture, the surrounding uh, events around this meditation. Uh, you know, was it embedded in the lecture or was it, um, or, or was it to a specific person or was it a eurythmic form? If you could say something about that, because it's so beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, of course. <clears throat> it's not embedded in a lecture. And you find it in the, in German, is the term Bauspruch or the GA40. I remember the yeah, yeah. GA40. Okay. And there it's a meditation given to a French and a pacifist in the year 1923. And probably French participants could know a little bit more than I, but I only know these details. And uh, it's for a French and a pacifist, and given in the year of the Christmas conference in 23. Yeah, thank you. Um, Ricardo, Ricardo, you are next. Thank you, Matthias, for this uh, presentation. Um, I was going back to the soul dimensions of a group, and you mentioned the different planetary qualities that a soul can have or, uh, or members of the group can have. Um, and if you could uh, fill out a little bit more in terms of what the Venus quality would be and the Mercury quality, because you mentioned all the other ones. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. <clears throat> I think if you look at the conference of in a hospital or in other institution, then you can feel if there is a certain warmth. And the warmth is in a way the quality of the Venus uh, to be welcomed uh, in the community. And if you have no person which feels or is active in such a way, then a certain frozen atmosphere can occur in a community. And the mercury, mercury quality is to bring in discussion several points and to see it from this point and from the other point and to have a certain living exchange between different parts and a nice discussion. It's the Hermes, the mercury impulse coming from one person to going to another and helping to have a certain exchange in the group or in the conference. I hope this help, helps a little bit. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, next question from Rachel Hammerlang. Rachel? Um, hi, thank you for your um, warming and thoughtful talk. I was wondering about in my own meditation practice, sometimes I've lately been focusing just on this idea of love and it, it kind of transforms to um, a feeling of warmth and expansion. And I'm wondering if these, this kind of self-discovered practices produces similar results that are through the prescribed meditations from Steiner. Yes, I think <clears throat> for me, it's very important to find in you a way to the spiritual world. And if you have a meditation which enables you to reconnect to the spiritual mm. world, this might be helpful and working in the discussed way. But for my opinion, I feel the verses given by Steiner are so deep and so important and so helpful that they can be really huge support for the inner work and the living with the spiritual world in this through these meditations. And because of this, if you get a certain approach to this meditation and 
if you understand them in a deeper way, then they are really door openers to the spiritual world. And this means that they can bring us forces for our daily practical work. And we have to check it, if it's possible, with other means. But I would recommend to try this in this way, because for this, I have had some experiences and I think that it is helpful to bring to develop new forces in for the soul and even for our daily work. And if you are really busy in your daily work and you have to work a lot of hours each day, then you need a certain prophylactic work not to burn out, but to inflame an inner fire. And for this, these meditations are very useful for my opinion. Thank you, that, that is helpful. I think very helpful to um, imagine it that other forces are coming in so it can always expand. So I will, um, I will include them in my practices. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Daniela Lazar is next. Daniela and Diane Walters goes after Daniela. Daniela, could you please unmute yourself and ask this question? How is connected warmth and hope with touch quality in our body therapies? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I think if we use these body therapies and this touching the patient, then you can feel a certain warmth which is created by these therapies. And the warmth is enabled the patient to reinforce the bodily sphere and the etheric level. And if a patient feels a certain healing effect of our therapies, then new hope arises. And you can be aware that hope can come out of the inner work. And this means uh, if you get new perspectives, then the new hope arises. But if you feel a recovering and an amelioration of your etheric forces, then you feel a better inner situation and out of this so hope in your soul can develop. And so there are two ways uh, how hope can be developed in the patient. One is new perspectives coming out of inner work from talks or new perspectives which are enlighten the patient and the soul and which are capable to create new hope. And on the other hand, the more Raphaelic way is to reinforce the etheric organism and then the patient feels better and this feeling is creating hope. Thank you very much. Uh, Diane Walters. Go thank, ahead. You. thank you so much, Matthias. Uh, I, I, I have two questions. I'm a, I've been a Waldorf teacher for 36 years. I mm -hmm. have worked with the principles of light and warmth as a teacher in the classroom. This is, these are the guiding principles Steiner gave to us. Mm -hmm. And I find that um, both in the uh, personal practice and then your, 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 your introduction through that and you end up in community um, uh, is, is, it was fantastic. And I think my big question is, is, is uh, the, the level of anxiety in children today that is seen uh, now as young as grade two and three with clinical anxiety um, and, and I've been really working with meditating on the Rose Cross, and I now work with just teachers. I, I'm not in the classroom, but I'm I'm wanting wanting to know what you think about meditating on a candle flame 
for teachers to work out of the uh, the warmth forces as well as the rose cross that Steiner gave to us in terms of I've always thought of the rose cross as a scrub brush for the astral body in mm -hmm. loose terms <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, and I just really want to know what you have to say on that because this every teacher today Waldorf or not, uh, around the world is dealing with aspects of clinical anxiety in children due to <clears throat> the pandemic and other yeah. things. Yeah, so thank you mean? very much for your question. It's really a big question. <clears throat> First, I would like to bring some aspects to the anxiety disorders in childhood and we have now in medicine the term early toxic stress. And this means that children who have experienced early toxic traumas and stress have consequences in their later life, even in adulthood. And this is in a certain way, anxiety, this is a loss of memory functions and of control functions. And even we are convinced or we, we, are, we are assuming that these early toxic stress are important for diseases in the later life. And it's so, um, important to know that Rudolf Steiner has spoken about traumas in childhood and consequences in later life. And he has spoken about uh, traumatic experiences and rheumatology and rheumatology diseases in later life. And so we have a certain connection between early traumas in childhood and the health and the inner and soul situation in adulthood and in even in the youth of the, these ch children. And now we know, and this is really interesting, that we can do something with endoposophic medicine if we use bryophyllum argentocultum or other remedies, if we use argentum silver ointment, then we can reinforce the etheric organization of children. And this is, even well known, warmth and love and a deeper understanding of children can heal. And this is a very nice example for the healing properties in the encounter with the children that they can, that we have the chance with the warmth of our soul and spiritual understanding to help these children which are traumatized. And now you are questioning what about the inner meditative work? And for my opinion, I would say you, the Rose Cross meditation, I think it's a very important one. And is, this is the well uh, described meditation by Rudolf Steiner and uh, it's the central meditation for anthroposophy, I think in the four steps which are mentioned in the book Occult Science. And because of this, I think, if we are seeking for an archetype of meditation or for meditation, then the uh, seven roses and the black cross are a very important one. And probably you know the very important book given by Jürgen Schmidt, and the name is Meditation and Christ Experience. This is my translation, and I'm very sure that this book is uh, translated into English. And there you find a very good um, introduction in the Rose Cross Meditation and the inner development which is possible through this meditation and in a very, in a really touching modesty, the relationship to the Christ. Jürgen Schmidt, meditation and Christ experience is the title. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. 
So next question from Trent, which is named NC in our uh, chat panel. Yeah, dear NC, please unmute yourself and introduce yourself to <laughs> what is your name? Um, hi, uh, I'm, I'm Nivedita. Uh, a few days back, I wrote you an email, Matthias, about the experience of heat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I uh, have this question that when a person is uh, uh, giving the heat, Personally, I uh, am. I don't know how to react. Sometimes uh, the heat is in form. Uh, I I can feel the person um, who is producing the heat, or also I can uh, see the imaginations. Like it, something is transferable through this heat. Um, so what is this quality of this heat which is able to like and also I don't know sometimes what is my feeling and what mm -hmm. I am getting from somebody so mm -hmm. uh, and how to interact when somebody is producing heat yeah. yes okay. you can have, I think, three aspects concerning the heat or the warmth of another person. And this is, of course, the bodily aspect. And then you have the warmth of the soul and the inner spiritual warmth. And all these three qualities are, in a way, radiating out in the world and, of course, to other persons. And <clears throat> if you are uh, questioning what is in the feeling of perceiving of warmth, your feeling and the warmth which are in a way coming to you, then it's very important that we have in a way a certain capacity to build a healthy border, not to let in all influences from outside, but to have in a way the capacity to perceive what is coming from the outside, even in form of heat or warmth, and to, to develop a certain sense quality, sense organ in the soul, and not to let it too much in. We need a certain differentiation between the one and the other, but both are connected in a way and we need a certain breathing and all perceptions and all sense organs are in a way breathing organs. They take a little bit from the outside into the inner world and they give something from the inner world to the outer world and there must be a certain balance between the inner and the outer world and one can get, I, I suppose and I assume, a certain feeling in which way something is too much entering the inner world and on the other hand one the soul is too much enclosed or too much uh, closed for outer experiences and if we if you are questioning what are helpful exercises to improve these qualities then you find some in the book, How to Achieve Higher Knowledge, given by Rudolf, by Rudolf Steiner. And there is a chapter about the seven conditions. And the fourth condition is the inner spiritual scale between the outer world and the inner world, and how to come to a certain balance between these both sides and aspects. Thank you very much. Um, so, and here is a question from Russia, from Yulia Pushkarskaya. Yulia, go ahead. Please unmute yourself. 
Uh, hello. Uh, I had a question um, about wombs and uh, womb applications, uh, whether they are always uh, good or um, <clears throat> can they uh, influence badly on the patient, on the ill person? Well, if, yes. if it's clear. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It's a very important mm -hmm. question because I have spoken uh, in a very engaged way to the healing properties of warmth, but all things which are in a way uh, um, applicated to the patient or to a human being must be transformed in inner qualities. You can have too much light, you can have too much warmth entering your body and you have, you need a certain capacity to digest the outer light, the outer warmth and to form inner warmth and inner light. And so you have some patients which are, which are really needing outer warmth and others which have enough warmth and then it's not very useful to bring them in a warmth uh, bath or something like that because they are not needing warmth and they are probably not capable to transform the outer warmth in the inner warmth. And this is a really important diagnosis we have to do and we have to become clear if a certain quality we are giving the patient or we, we yes we are giving warmth or something like that and if this if there is a capacity to transform the quality coming from outside in an inner quality and so we know in some diseases if you you are starting with very hot temperatures or a strong warmth then it's not very useful. You have to adapt the warmth to the inner capacity to transform the outer warmth to the inner warmth. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we are back to Florian. Florian, yeah, can you please unmute yourself? And uh, what is your question? Hi, Matthias. I had a uh, another question related to that same uh, two lectures. This is the second lecture of geographic medicine. And in there, Rudolf Steiner speaks of the doppelganger that enters the human being just before birth. And he, I have it in front of me here, he characterizes the being as being extraordinarily highly intelligent and significantly developed will, but no warmth of heart at all. Nothing of what we call human soul warmth, uses the German word gemüt. And uh, he speaks of this being as, as Arimanic Mephistophelian. He then goes on a little further down and he says, and here's something, is disclosed that in the future must really be followed up if the human race is not to experience endless hindrances, really endless horrors. This double about which I have spoken is nothing more or less than the creator of all physical illnesses that emerge spontaneously from within. And to know him fully is organic medicine. Illnesses that appear spontaneously from within the human being come not through outer injuries, not from the human soul, but they come from this being. He is the creator of all illnesses that emerge spontaneously from within. He is the creator of all organic illnesses. And a brother of his, who is not composed arimonically, but luciferically, is the creator of all neurasthenic and neurotic illnesses, all illnesses that are not really illnesses, but only nervous illnesses, hysteric illnesses, etc. And he speaks of how this being is bound up with the bioelectromagnetic forces in the organism. And it seems uh, that he says that this being wants to overcome death. He has to depart in the face of death. 
but in the future, they don't want to have to succumb to leaving the human being at death. And there are technological developments that are ongoing and are converging with biotechnology, artificial intelligence, robotics, et cetera, that seem to be moving in this direction of being inspired by Ariman to be able to overcome death. And this picture of this being not having warmth, uh, this human gamut of soul, et cetera, uh, this is a being of coldness that counters what we are talking about here. Uh, perhaps you could say something about this. I know in the leading thoughts, Steiner speaks of Ariman. Uh, the closer you get to him, the more coldness uh, is there. <clears throat> Yes, I think <clears throat> only a few words about this. If we have in the human organism the polarity between the sclerotic diseases on the one hand and even luciferic diseases, and they can be developed in different directions. And the sclerotic diseases are the main diseases of our present times, because if you look back for, for 100 years, we have so many infective fever and uh, other diseases, tuberculosis and something like that. And in, at the end of the last century, we have a lot of sclerotic diseases. And even if we speak about COVID and something like that, then you have a lot of sclerotic forces and thrombophilic forces in even this disease. And so you have a sclerotic tendency. And the sclerotic tendency is in a way an erimanic force. And you have pointed out some perspectives, even the interaction of the human being with the machines. And I think we can be aware that transhumanism is really a certain goal for a certain development, which brings near together the world of machines with the human organism. And we have pacemakers now for the brain in Parkinson's diseases and with pacemakers for the heart, with pacemakers, even for the stomach. And we see that we have in a way a certain deeper connections with the machines and the electromagnetic forces in the human organism to optimize the human being. And for me, it's really the opposite for the inner development, how we can become more and more a truly human being. And on the other hand, how we can optimize our human being through this means and machines and the close contact of the human being with the world of machines. And so, if you are looking at tendencies in modern medicine, you have so many robotas and so many machines working in the present medicine. And we have to see how we can use them. But if we use them, then we have to re-improve or to reinforce the human qualities in medicine. And this is a call for the right love in for the patient the right deeper understanding and the importance that medicine needs healing forces to help patients and if you will bring this together what is the counterpart for the robotization of medicine then for my opinion is to bring light into the relationship to the patient, new perspectives to bring warmth and love and to reinforce the life and the healing properties. And if you put this in three terms, then for me, the three holy kings, 
for the relationship to the other patient and even to each other person are light, life, and uh, the love. And these three things are, for my opinion, the inner perspectives of development of human encounter to create the light and the warmth, the love and the life in the contact to the patient and to overcome the mechanical aspects you have mentioned and which are really a certain, yes, perspective of our present times. And this is, for my opinion, the very important uh, perspective of anthroposophic medicine to bring these qualities, these light, love, and life into medicine and to reinforce the encounter with the patient. Yeah. Thank you so much, Matthias. Dear friends, uh, we are tending to finish at 10 o'clock Central European time. <laughs> so it's pretty late in Berlin. Uh, we have two questions um, more. And um, yeah, can you please, Olga and uh, Dave, can you please uh, form this question in the form of email and send it to me? Maybe I can communicate with uh, uh, Matthias and um, get some clarity on your questions. So dear friends, so uh, let me round our session and you know, uh, dear Matthias, many thanks for your patience and for your ability to bring your all knowledge. Um, yeah, dear friends, uh, the lecture of Matthias will be posted on our website in the page of uh, events. Yeah, so you're welcome uh, to see it and share it, uh, yeah. Now you please free, uh, unmute yourself and greet each other and Matthias. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Very much. Thank you.